Constance discussed at this meeting may be sensitive to some attendees. If prayers take a break, we will ask another person to take the break with you and ask if you are okay. And I think uh, uh, Nancy had volunteered to follow that. Absolutely. Thank you. Gordon, do you want to use the mic? That'll, that'll give me, I think, you can get me, right? Well, we'll just go with it. So no one am I? No one am I. Okay. The guidelines that I printed in the last uh, thing are here also. I'm not going to go through them. This is a piece to understand how we can effectively move through a meeting. And at your leisure, if you would read that and bring yourself up to date on it. I did have a request to uh, make this statement at the front of our meeting. Welcome to our meeting. Actually make the statement and then this was developed to comply with that statement. Welcome to our meeting. Before we begin, it was suggested that when we introduce ourselves that we share our names and personal pronouns. For those who haven't done this before, this is a way that we can avoid assumptions, particularly about gender. What may seem obvious may actually be incorrect, and please keep in mind that while many people associate he or she as meaning men or women, respectively, that isn't always the case. This is not about sharing your gender or private information. That is not what I'm asking, asking for. I'm only asking for uh, pronouns that you want to be referred to by because these are part of the English language and how we typically prefer, refer to people. Some people do go by they and them, pronouns, and another set of pronouns, or a, another way of being referred to. However, most people either go by she and her pronouns or he and him pronouns. They would simply say, hi, I'm Lisa, and I go by she pronouns, she and uh, she and yes, she, her, and hers. Or I'm Henry and I go by he, him, and his. If you don't understand what I'm asking, or if you feel that you are uncomfortable sharing or unable to participate in a respectful way, it's okay to just share your name. But if you feel comfortable to share, and you know what, that typically you go by a certain set of pronouns and are good with that, let us know. Please also keep in mind that what people in the room, in this room share today, is just that, is just what people are sharing today in this space and time. And that people may change their names or pronouns or go by different ones in another space. Does anyone have any questions before we begin introductions? We'll go around this way. My name is Gordon Clay. I'm the chair of the Suicide Awareness and Prevention Council, and I go by they, them, and theirs. My name is Alicia Lukin Crone. I am the Agency Director of Victim Advocate and Prevention Specialist, and I go by she or her hurts. <coughs> this is Beth Barker, development, and I am the United Way Community Tech Manager and the Director of the Career. I'm almost foolish with my pronouns as she or hers. I'm Connie Hunter, and um, together with veterans, uh, <coughs> working with them lately, and my pronouns are she, her, and her. I'm Brian DeGroff. I'm a volunteer at the Check for Activity Center, also known as the Senior Center in Berkins, and I go by she and her. I'm Catlin Temple. I'm the Assistant Director of the Checker Community Public Library, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Chala, Shukushi, Katrina. Hello, my name is Katrina. I'm enrolled at Snooker 
Some of you speak so softly that you can't rely upon my catching what you're saying on my recording. We have three microphones that are there. They're tied into the library system. The library staff has tested them. They work. And I would request if you want my recording to be an accurate, complete recording of your discussion, you need to use them. Thanks, Carl. Anyone to make a public comment? You have 
three minutes. Would anybody like to speak? Whatever they, yes. Okay. I'd like to introduce Rick Boyce, and it. I guarantee you, when I sent this in, it said TV PSA project, not IV T project. And so somewhere in the translation, it came out a little differently, and this is not an IV situation. Oh, on the one. Yeah, the one that you got handed. The one that is in your packet. Yeah, I just picked up these at the office. They got uh, corrected so. The one in your packet says IV. And the one that you got separately apparently says T. So that is that is Britt. Good evening. I am Mrs. Britt Ivy Boyce. It's a privilege to be here this evening. I'm just gonna take maybe three minutes and brief you on a proposal that uh, would involve your participation in a PSA project. So I'm going to hand you each, well actually you can just pass these down and then I'm not parading around the room. One moment. Wonderful. So what we have here is the opportunity to create a public service announcement about this fantastic committee. And I have provided a sheet that basically is just asking for your name, yes or no, if you want to participate. Of course, I'd love everyone to participate, but there's no pressure. And this would consist of maybe 15 to 30 seconds of you sharing um, generally, I ask uh, the camera, um, very similar to Carl's camera, would be set up, and I would ask some questions. Generally, I can ask, what brought you to the Suicide Prevention Council? So if I didn't have any feedback, I would probably start with a question such as that. And each person would have, say, a minute uh, to share a story, more if you need it, and then we would cut that down, or if you request we don't cut it down, just share a story about why you're here, why you're passionate about it. So I put a few example questions on the form I just handed out. Uh, the first is, what is your inspiration for serving on the council? Number two, I asked about a brief personal story on how suicide has touched your life. Number three, share hopes for positive outcomes as a result of this council's efforts. Number four, and I just noticed a typo here, the role of bullying in suicide. Possibly number five could be comments on the suicide's dream team that Gordon has put together here to end this epidemic. And six, an idea would be to speak about suicide as it pertains to your particular committee. So each of you have your own area of expertise. Um, so if you would just hand this in with your name, if you choose to participate or not, and of course, if we get to the day, and you decide, yes, I'd like to participate, and you would check no, you're very welcome to participate. Or if you decide, I'd rather not, or I'm sick, or whatever the case may be, either way is fine. We just want to open it up to anyone. And of course, um, we have not picked a date yet. At the bottom, if you have any suggestions for a question that you would like posed to you, um, I am open to hearing any suggestions. Would appreciate any thoughts or ideas you have at the bottom of that there. And uh, more will be revealed at a later time as far as a date when this will happen. Probably before or after a meeting, so there's not an extra special place to go and another uh, meeting to attend since we're all so busy. Um, personally, my cousin uh, died on a, a motorcycle and, and uh, after a, a very intense weekend of um, too much um, too much indulging in 
in teenage things uh, and got on a motorcycle. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, at a very young age. And some people call call that or addictions, um, you know, slow suicide. There are all sorts of different ways to to get to to suicide, as you're aware. So. At any rate, I just figured, since I'm asking you all personal questions, that I would reveal something about myself. And um, thank you so much for your service. And if you would just take a moment, fill these out, and, and pass them up to Gordon, that would be much appreciated. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, forgive me for not knowing exactly um, your role, but where will these go? Where will these be airing? Well, this will air, it will start here in Curry County with the hopes of each county's television station, um, them airing it throughout the state. So you have a television station here? The 182 channel is um, the one that we would first submit that to. I'm I've also back. spoken to okay. Jackson okay. County and Josephine County. Okay. The government channel on cable. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Sure, no problem. <laughs> <Anybody> <laughs> so be sure and put your name on it and uh, check yes or no. And why don't you pass them in to our secretary? Okay, that's me. Beautiful. Thanks for the opportunity to speak with you.
double this off. Okay. So we see that that end with no fingers on it is take your fingers off for a moment. See? See where the level is. Okay? So we've got to watch this so that we're all lowering the bar at the same time level. This is called So start relaxing. Let it go all the way. Don't curl up your finger. Don't lock it in. Just let it. Relax it. Go down. We're up. So let it. Let it slowly go down. And we're going all the way to the floor. So we have we to each other? Yeah. Okay, so I think that we should have a, a meter that counts down. Yeah. Like yeah. this. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go on the count of, we're going to get five, five counts to go down. So three will be down to a knee. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go on five, and then four, three will be at knee. All right, here we go. Just watch it level. Keep it level to get there. Everybody's ready? Mm -hmm. Five.
And did anybody get in touch with anything else that might have really, uh, even a little way, influenced that reduction that we possibly may be looking at for the future and emphasizing that uh, in the development of our program? I think your outreach has made a big difference because I see your cards and your buttons and your pins just all over the county everywhere I go. So I think that made a big impact. Thank you. I'm going to second that. I'm going to second that. Um, I actually heard verbally that your presence, even in Port Orchard, has grown so much uh, with the media uh, that people are talking about it and they know what are you okay means. Uh, and they even know what the question mark. So they, what? they even know what the question mark is about as well, because you can put that through. So people are paying attention. Reminder: we got a mic on each table. We've got a mic on each table. Is that picked up? I can't tell. I didn't turn it off. Anyone else? Yes, Connie. Go ahead. I, I called, I saw you first. I called you first, okay. <clears throat> One of the things that I really noticed was that we have a consistency of messaging from the public policy level to the ground level, to the boots on the ground. That's a large part because of your public awareness, but also the policy of our county has changed. You know, when I first started speaking about veteran suicide literally had a county commissioner leave and say everybody knows somebody in Curry County who's a veteran that's committed suicide. That's not the way that the public policy approaches at the city councils or at the board of commissioners anymore. The, the narrative has been changed. Um, also I'd like to say in 2018 one thing that uh, I feel contributed to uh, improving things for veterans was we did our uh, veterans, uh, uh, the VA uh, Healthcare Summit 2.0, and we had a lot of information, including on board and speaking about suicide. So I think our messaging across the board has improved. Our uh, lack of fear about talking about uh, not only suicide prevention, but behavioral health. So some <coughs> severe stigma busting has taken place. I was just going to say that um, just joining this this uh, group um, has made me think more in depth about suicide and how it has affected so many different people in so many different ways. And I would say because I'm new to this, even though I've you know had the experience that I shared with you. Um, in 2018 is when my son's best friend in the Army committed suicide. And since then, um, what I've learned is it's very rampant in the military. And I, I believe that in the past year that the military has started to pay more attention. And I would like to do more work to hold them more accountable to do more than just pay attention. Um, but I feel like it wasn't talked about as much prior to 2018 as it has been in the last uh, year and a half or two years. Um, and then one other thing, sorry. Um, I was in a meeting this morning with a pastor from a church and he's involved with um, the Homeless Coalition in Delmar County. And he said something that really, I really thought about all day, um, and I think maybe this will be the time to share it, but he said that they had some training recently, and it made everybody change their perspective about why homeless people might choose to commit suicide. And it's that they really only pay attention to the first 20, to 24 hours, like getting through 24 hours. They don't think about what their actions today will mean to their family or to anybody else a week from now. So if we can get into the mindset, how do we help them get through 24 hours more effectively? And then after the 24 hours, then your next goal is to get them through 48 hours, and then a week, 
and then keep giving them reasons that continue to have hope that the hope is that then they will make better choices for their, for their future. So that was just something that really hit home with me today. Thank you. Go ahead. Would you take a couple of minutes and just kind of share because I think Kelly might want to be involved with it and uh, other people here in the group might be want to be involved with what we went through on Saturday. Um, <clears throat> quickly, uh, Curry County, uh, okay, there are 3,007 counties in the United States and <clears throat> the Office of uh, Rural Health Care, the VA's Office of Rural Health Care, has a special program called Together with Veterans. They had one cohort previously last year started where seven counties participated in that cohort. Uh, and the second cohort were being asked to participate. And they actually bring resources to the rural areas that that would be hard for us to to come up with ourselves and it I, uh, it's a three-year program uh, the VA provides and I have all the information in the batch uh, Kelly so is that what you sent us on the email yes but I, I have more back there and I'll share that with you um, <clears throat> so the, the important thing is that they bring resources and they they have a structure to their program for suicide prevention, but it has to be implemented and customized by the issues here. The boots on the ground make the decisions on how to address the problems. It's kind of like a menu. There are a lot of ways to address suicide prevention, um, specifically among veterans and the military, but how does that change from place to place? Here we have uh, a, a different set of circumstances that make it complex to deal with the problem. The VA uh, finally came to its census and said, hey, we are not a one-size-fits-all organization, so we have to have, and, and one of my biggest complaints... Uh, Connie, would you just hear, what are they asking of us? What, what are they asking? Oh, to put together a team and a work uh, group of people to actually do a plan um, to, to come up with goals and objectives and over a three-year period implement that plan of suicide prevention. Um, $40,000 budget for two years, a uh, third year $20,000 budget, but about $100,000 um, in-kind um, program support. So it's saying, we don't know exactly what to do there, but we have some good ideas. Can you help us fine-tune it and implement it in your town or in your county? And um, to be chosen to be a part of the second cohort was, was amazing. But there's a lot of good information, and I will gladly meet with you one on one, Kelly, because I think this is one uh, good in depth information to get out to the community. And for anybody that's here, there's plenty of information back there that describes the program, and it actually lays out a template of uh, how to address uh, those issues and the steps and the stages to get that done. So basically, we're wanting to get as many veterans involved. It's got to be a high level of veterans. This isn't the VA coming in and doing the work. It's, if, the P, if the vets don't want it, it's not going to happen. And, uh, and we are one of you know, 10 counties or something in the country that got picked out. They see that we've got an issue here, and we can be very beneficial to the VA for that. And, and I want to say one thing, not to interrupt you, Gordon, but it came down to Coos and Curry County. And, I, and I'm going to be honest, I'm going to act it a little bit. Is that okay? Uh, Will Lawson was the person that uh, said to the Oregon Health Authority, Emily Watson, who was really the person who was making the decision for uh, okay. Curry County, uh, I mean, for, for the state of Oregon. And if it had not been for Will having confidence in Curry County from what he's seen and participated, we wouldn't have this. So Will did the evaluation, saw who we were, got to know us, and has participated and engaged us to the point where he trusts us to go forward with this. And I think we need to take that.
I was just going to add in 2018 with uh, Gordon's assistance and getting some grant funding from All Care uh, and another medical group, I can't recall their name at this point, but he was uh, made it available to my students at Gold Beach High School to take a, a four hour course um, in suicide prevention and intervention. Uh, it was called Respond. Um, so our students went through that and had a, a uh, refresher about a year later. Uh, he also helped promote uh, the pop-ups on kids' cell phones that had the uh, semicolon on them and he gave away to all, all middle and high school students in, in, uh, in, our, in, our, in Gold Beach. And I know those programs were offered to the other two high schools in the county, but I'm not sure if they had the opportunity to uh, promote it, but kids are still have the pop-ups on their phone, and that's almost two years later. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. That's some new information. Uh, yes. Hope everyone noticed how close Tim held the microphone to his mouth. It's necessary. It Connie was just as loud on my camera without it as she was with it. You got to hold it close to your mouth. Uh, 7B, let's talk about lived experience. And what this basically is, and I talked about it a little bit last month, is to get uh, the message out, break this silence, and start talking about our individual experiences. And part of that is to join me, it's supposed to be on the first of the month, the first BOC uh, Board of Commissioners meeting, uh, to present uh, your three-minute present your three-minute deal on your lived experience. And I put a document in here to give you an idea of uh, the monthly event calendar. Here are things that are happening each month that we could pick one of those and make that our topic and then have one person not necessarily have talking about that issue but talking about their lived experience in uh, suicide suicide attempts or prevention the this month is self awareness or self injury month and there has been a document that i put in here after telling your story, this went to the newspapers here. In fact, the pilot had it in their newspaper last week. I haven't seen it in Del Nord, or I expect it maybe in the uh, reporter today. But a, a, a story about waking people up to self-injury, and particularly with our students. I've talked to the therapists that work with the kids here. We've got an amazing number of kids that are self-injuring. And the numbers say boys do it as much as girls. They don't do cutting, and that's why all the attention has been on cutting. They do pounding walls, hitting themselves, burning themselves with uh, cigarettes, that kind of stuff. And the concern is that it, it doesn't lead to suicide in the majority of cases, but self-injury is difficult to intervene with and get it out of a person's system, and they need to know, they need to really want that. And the problem comes if they really are hooked into it and it develops for a long time because of research says that those people that are hooked into it, 70% of them will attempt suicide. So this went out and the proclamations went out to all the, to, to the county, which it will be addressed, I believe, at the next, uh, the 18th meeting, the proclamation. Yes. Um, and if somebody, and, and this is a, a request, if somebody <coughs> has a, had an issue with self-injury and would be willing to speak out about that at the commissioner's meeting. Uh, a three minute intro like Voight does a thing, uh, 
court does a thing at the beginning of every meeting on uh, police and uh, soldier deaths. And this is one thing that we want to introduce almost on a monthly basis to get people to talk about suicide and the different aspects of it. So if there's anybody that would be willing to speak on the 18th, up at the commissioner's meeting at 9 a.m. on that issue or suicide in general, but I'm just thinking the opportunity for self-entry, that would be a, an ideal thing. Yes? May I clarify, are we telling our experience personally or our experience with encountering those issues? Whatever works for you. It's, it's really just explaining. If you look at the one document about um, telling your story, and there are a lot of ideas of different ways that that can go, and it can be your own personal experience or your experience with somebody else. Uh, and just to get people to realize the depth that something like that goes to and, uh, uh, and get it out in public. Yes. Any anybody else? Thank you. Gordon. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, sometimes you hear in uh, no hurry and curry, and sometimes that just doesn't apply. I've been going to ask you, Gordon, for two months, and I keep forgetting. But have we researched by chance other counties that may have the awareness and the effort that, that we're, we began here. Are you are you aware? Yes. And Josephine Coos, does anybody know? And I'll tell you why I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, if not, or to the extent. Washington, I know. There's a, a coalition okay. of four counties up there. All right. This group that's assembled here, uh, sometimes the no hurry uh, concept, there is a hurry here. And with with the, the folks that are willing, I mean, I, it really hit me the first meeting we had with the quality folks, the commitment, uh, the stories. Um, it uh, it was really motivating to be involved, and I think that Curry County actually has a chance to lead. And so your efforts here can hopefully, and I believe will, in, in a, eventually in a solid way, reach to other parts of the of the state, and really can make a big difference. Kelly mentioned military, and you, you brought it up again. Uh, I read a deal not too long ago, and. Uh, it was basically the spouse of a police officer. The greatest sound in the world is when they come home at night and they hear that bell crow. And they know that their sweetheart is home safe and sound. And I can't imagine, I never had to live with that. You know, I have one son that's a, a police officer, but uh, that's, uh, that's something that they live with nonstop. And then the, the suicide rate of police officers is growing in this country dramatically, as you know. And in, in addition to that, Recruiting police officers throughout the U.S. of A. is getting to be a, a larger issue all the time. So everything we're doing here can help our culture, I think, long term. And the awareness, and uh, yeah, that's enough for now. Thanks for letting me speak there, Gordon. Yeah. A little update on that. The microphone. Uh, an update on that is that we did the, in the three counties, we did the Suicide Awareness 16 page magazine in September of last year and I've talked with the publisher and we're going up to a meeting, a statewide meeting on suicide prevention that Lines for Life is putting on in Medford in October and even going to have a table there and see if we can't convince the other uh, other 31 counties to do the same thing because it's already prepared. All it needs to do is get the support of people uh, putting up the money to develop it. And the, the second thing is the Alliance for Suicide Prevention, which is part of the state of California, or Oregon. Uh, I have been going to that, I haven't the last year, but I've been going to that for two years. It's a quarterly meeting up in Salem. I'm going up there on the 13th for their quarterly meeting and we will be listed with their uh, alliance. And uh, it's, that hole has been there for a long time. 
a lot of counties are involved in some kind of, most of them are uh, mental health based, like the hospital is running something for the county. But there are a few that it's individuals like us that are doing the work. Boots on the floor, uh, on the ground. Yes, Ben. So I'm not sure that this is directly relevant, but I just wanted to share with everybody, right before I left to come to this meeting, I got an email from Bevan Hansel, who is one of our transformation innovators from Oregon Health Authority assigned to the All Care Community Advisory Council. Um, and she sent out the opioid dashboard. Many of you might have looked at that before and, and looked at some of the data that um, the state of Oregon has been collecting about opioid use, whether it's prescription or illicit drugs. To get back to uh, somebody's comment regarding slow suicide, right, I think, um, talking about people who have substance use disorder, I was disturbed to see that our county shows zero data for hospital overdose. And I, ha I mean, I happen to know that that's not accurate. And I asked Bevan to please explain to me why we're not hitting, why aren't we um, showing any data in Curry County for hospital overdoses because I'm almost positive that we have had overdoses in our hospital. And I don't know if there's a trigger we need to hit before they start counting our data. And I just bring that up because I think that maybe a look across the board at data collection in Curry as to how it might, whether it's directly related or maybe a, a side um, to this topic of suicide prevention, um, maybe we should take a dive into what data collection is going on for our county and make sure that it really is accurately reflecting what our, what our issues are in our county because um, that's how you, when you show a demand for, for services, that's how, you know, you need your data <laughs> to show that we have a, a need. And, and if we're not showing any data on the state dashboard, that's problematic for me. And I just thought I'd let the rest of the group know you might want to look at the Oregon opioid dashboard and just take a gander for yourself and see what kind of data is showing for Curry County because it's very little. And I think that's a problem for us. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I wanted to just interject something. One of the pieces of the work that Together with Veterans does is to collect that data. So they're going to show us a system that works for collecting data. And <clears throat> if you need a copy of those new opioid taper uh, guidelines, I sat on that task force. So if you have any questions, um, it was about a six month process uh, I have lived experience, and so I was uh, participated. I have, been, I have to read between two and four hours a day for about two weeks before every task force meeting. It, there was so much uh, information and so much effort that went into developing those guidelines. I have already submitted those guidelines with a request to our VA director that our VA catchment area use those guidelines and we're sending it also to uh, Senator Wyden and others to ask that the VA uh, who at one point in time without uh, prior notice cut veterans uh, pain medicines in half uh, throughout the system. No tapering, no prior notice and veterans were left and family members to deal with the veterans who uh, had their uh, pain meds cut. So we want that kinder, gentler uh, attitude um, and one of the things that I really appreciated was when Will came out and spoke at, and uh, Commissioner uh, Court Boyce uh, put together a workshop that addressed the opioid crisis. And one of the things that uh, came from that was uh, there, was, there was an effect on veterans and there was an effect throughout the community as a result of that. Some veterans, instead of uh, just being able to adapt, had to um, they, they felt the need sometimes to drug seek uh, other ways, and that was not a, a good predicament to put veterans in. Um, so, Will, did you have anything you want to say about that particular 
Yeah, I think the taper guidelines are crucial, as, as Connie was mentioning. Um, I work the Veteran Crisis Line. Um, every day I handle anywhere from 5 to about 12 calls of people, uh, veterans that are suicidal in our catchment area. And one of the chief indicators is chronic pain, chronic pain management and the inability to be effectively treated um, medically and uh, the lack of referral resources, so on and so forth. So Connie really has hit something right on the head in terms of something to be addressing um, and make sure that we're not blanketing something that we know needs to happen, a decrease in opioid prescription stuff, but not blanketing. We need to treat people as individuals and use appropriate uh, medical intervention. So I'm just going to follow up. So back to her statement. Back to, I'm sorry, is it Beth? Back to Beth's statement. Are you saying that there is opioid dashboard information that she's not seeing? There, it's the same thing. When I was looking through the dashboard, there's lots of different topics you can choose from. There are lots of different data sets that you can look at. But I wanted to look specifically at Curry County and, and hospital ODs. It's because the work I do with the clientele that I work with, I know that we've had ODs in our hospital. And so I was looking for that number. And it's a big goose egg. So it's happening, but we're not capturing the data. And so that's concerning to me. And I think that I don't think that's the only incident where we're where we're lacking in, in data collection either. That in, and that's critical information for our county to make good decisions on where we need to focus our energies and our efforts. So, but I just wanted to point that out that I think we're missing we're missing the mark in some areas of data collection. And, and I'm not sure. I'm hoping Bevan will get back to me with with why that is and what we can do perhaps to influence a change along that along that, you know, that around the death collection. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Let's just I just, it wanna, I'd just like to agree with Beth that there is issues with data collection, um, especially in the tribal community. Uh, we're coming up on the 2020 census and we're doing actual trainings at tribes to teach people how to, you need to say your tribe, you need to say your native in order for that number to count. Um, and it hasn't in the past, especially with suicides. The uh, Epidemiology Center in Portland reported only five suicides in Curry County that were native. Um, and they don't have access to that data because five is the, the limit to where they can get that information from the state. So mm -hmm. we know it's more, but again, there is definite uh, issues in reporting and collecting data. What do you all think the issue is? Why isn't it moving forward like it should? Michelle. So one of um, the things that I've noticed running programs and trying to do data for evidence-based programs, you have to prove that um, you have the need. Um, our county births have been off for 12 years, finding out how many births actually happen in our county. And I can't tell you where the hole is other than um, perhaps the changing of guards and the way, um, like when somebody new rolls over um, or a new entity takes um, um, the data collection, they start over again. They, they do it differently. And maybe that's the reason. <coughs> um, I had, a, and I asked Bev this question in my email to her, was that we are a critical access hospital. If somebody presents in the ER as an OD and they're not going to stay at the hospital, they get shipped out to somewhere else for whatever reason. Their treatment is going to extend that four-day maximum stay or, or whatever. Maybe that has something to do. I don't know. I'm trying to give give our healthcare providers an out here. I don't know if, the, if it's because of the type of hospital we have and the short stays that people typically have. I, I don't really know, but I'm hoping that I'll get a response back from her that I can share with you guys next time we come together or I'll, I'll email out to email the board and, and Teresa and they can push it out to you guys. If they get a comprehensive response to my question, that would be nice information for all of us to have. Anyone else? Breathe. Mm 
I might just want to ask Will a couple of questions later, if that's okay, Mr. Chair, just at the end or something. Sure. Close your eyes for a minute. If you had, close your eyes, please. If you had all the money in the world, and you could do anything with it to end suicide in Curry County, what would that be? What would that look like? Dream big. Because there's no limit here. Number of people. Number of whatever it is. And when you've got that, Open your eyes and pick up your dream journal and write it down. your pants down when you're complete. It'll be complete. You said dream bed. <laughs> you said dream bed. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't put your pen down until you're complete. <clears throat>
it goes to me and I can upload it in 10 seconds. So it's really, really simple. It doesn't have to go through any committees or anything like that. Just send me an email and I'll put it on. Um, the next page is that data that I've added in in 2019. Actually, I'm showing 2019 for Oregon and 2019 for Curry County. And uh, it's the chart with all this chart. Uh, so our, our data for uh, 2018 na nationally went up to 2.3% or 4%. It went up uh, for 2019 in Oregon, 2.3 percent, and in Curry County, it went up 21 percent. Now that was small numbers. We were at the lowest we've been since 2011 in 2018, and we had uh, a total of nine in 2019 confirmed. Or not? They're not confirmed. I'm sorry. There's an asterisk there. That is what we've got so far, and it will not be finalized data until August. So, because they clear medical and all that kind of stuff to become official data. But uh, this this is a pretty valuable chart to use um, in, in getting information. The next page is goals, and I don't know if any of you or if you had an opportunity to. Through this, uh, I said this is what I had found in various places and developed a mission, vision, core values, purpose, and roles that I see as possibilities. And I'm really interested in feedback and take things off, add things on, correct things, change things. But this is something that we need, I see, that we need to set up in what are we going to do? What in all the information and all the possibility from the 14 stakeholder groups and maybe stakeholder groups that are out there that we haven't addressed? Because the county would only let me have 17 people. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so anyway, uh, I'll go to the next step and then I'll open it up. The next two pages are what I've gleaned from collecting the next, I'm sorry, four, the next five pages. The next four pages are what I've gleaned over doing this issue for a number of years and then doing a lot of research in since January when the commission commissioners approved having such a council. I took each one of the stakeholder groups and I put down what I see as potential goals. And I'm not, uh, I've classified a little of them. The first group is council goals, long-term goals and short-term goals. And then I've included hanging, low hanging fruit. And then on page four, it starts with all the individual groups. And what I see, and this is really minimal for some, uh, education and health and some of those I've been working on for a long time, so I've got a lot bigger awareness on what I feel is needed within those. But, um, to me, the next steps would be to really look at what the commission or the council should set up in our values and goals. And then as we move along, each one of the stakeholder groups and talking to individuals within your category that see additional needs or see needs that can be addressed right now. Uh, the, address, the need that I saw addressing right now is to start breaking the 
the assignments. And so self-injury week month was this month, and I took actions to make that happen. I always do it in May for mental health month, and in September for suicide, and October for bullying. And this is just another one, adding one in there. So I see that as a low-hanging fruit and took action. So, hands. Any questions? Beth. Um, I don't have a question, but I, I had emailed Gordon following our first meeting, first of all, to congratulate him for his tenacity <laughs> of bringing us together. Um, but I had a couple of suggestions for, a, as, I under, as I understand it, um, I'm heading up the uh, substance use disorder task committee, right, for this larger group. So one of the things that I'd like to talk about doing and I don't have anybody on this task force yet. I haven't done a lot of recruitment, but I think low hanging fruit for us is is organizing a walk out of darkness here in, in Curry County for September, which is Suicide Awareness Month. And and I don't know how many other folks around the table are familiar with this yeah. effort and event, but I'm opening it up to people who might be interested in helping me or organize something like that. I, I, it's in there in the the goal were as far as I, I think we need to have a purpose and a, a goal for the group and then add things in. It is in the action. Actions. And the purpose that you stated was that we are talking about it and that we are being more, you know, we're being more transparent about the issues itself and I think that, that you know, and I understand what you're saying, that it's in here. I'm opening it up to the rest of the group if they want to participate and help me organize such an event. I would like for you to email me and let me know um, your willingness to, to help me in that. So, right. that. Thank you. Yeah, and that is a, a fundraiser for ASP. ASP. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, it is in, it's a document later on in action. Things that we can take action on. So yes, get a hold of that. And if anybody wants to move on something um, quickly, you can do that. Michelle. Um, I'd like to uh, add uh, specific groups that aren't being protected right now into our core values. Um, and I don't know how or where, or I guess just in our mission, our core values and our purpose. Um, I'd like to see the LGBTQ plus group actually put into this document as a core value because it is a group that is not protected right now and their rights keep getting um, smaller and smaller. Michelle, you say protected by who? By our local governments. Or not, or not by, our, I guess, our federal governments at this point. Yeah. Yeah. The LGBTQ oh, okay. plus. Um, I think it, I just think it needs addressing specifically because um, because of the suicide rates on that specific. And I, I, I would also add it into the health uh, initiative uh, uh, because that is you know, even a separate uh, talk with providers about um, specific concerns that the LGBTQ plus group experiences. Uh, Will? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is working. No, no. Uh, Beth, I just wanted to comment real quick about the Out of Darkness walk. I had the um, uh, pleasure of helping to do that last year at Curry County, and it was a phenomenal turnout. We had a huge walk, a lot of partnership agencies. It takes a long time to get it planned, especially to be done right, so let me know how I can help. And also, the funds came back to Coos County last year. Coos County. You said Coos County. Oh, sorry, Coos County. And it came back. Yeah. No, yeah. It came back to Coos County. So, such an opportunity. And yeah. let me know how I can help with this video. Thank that. you. Yeah. I got your name down. That's Coos County. Well, and, and Jamar Ruff also would be another one. Absolutely. Yeah. Beth, can you explain to everybody in this room what that is? 
I bet Will could probably do a better job of that. Yeah, the outer yeah, darkness yeah, so walk, the idea is to uh, create awareness and, and really reduce stigma that's happening around mental health and suicide. And so what happened is you're getting a coalition together, uh, as many partnership agencies, and you're setting an event for a community to come together uh, and participate. You get teams to drive to create fundraising as well. Um, and when they get there, you do beautiful ceremonies with different type of bead ideas. You maybe lost a family member, you lost a friend, you get a different colored bead. So it really brings this collective community uh, as you're talking about the topic, and then you take a nice walk together. Uh, in Coos County, we went down by the uh, boardwalk and walked back around. It was just such a huge building experience and really brought a lot of awareness, and it also brings media, and that's really what we want. So, anybody else? On, uh, on uh, the LGBT uh, emoji, uh, the, I would see that under mental health. And I don't know, we can't establish a, another category, but I think that would fit under mental health the best. And uh, because you're working with, mo you're working with most of that issue in there and in education, probably. And, and actually what I can see it is put uh, the goal under mental health and under education and maybe some other areas um, as... Um, Legislation. Government. Yeah. It, I, I still believe it also belongs under that rule too because it is, right. it is a well, different mindset. It belongs on a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. Yeah. Uh, I think all of those affected by suicide belong in just about every category there is. Well, but if I understood your request, I'm trying to speak at for college, I'll just be open mind. But if I understood your request, Michelle, it sounds to me like what you're asking for is that that particular group be identified in our core values as we're going to, we're going to, I don't know, we're going to add these to our core values because we want to help, again, reduce stigma and, and, and create greater transparency around this group of people that happen to live in our community and should be. I don't know, I, I, I'm done now, but I think that's what I hear you say. Yeah. Well, that was my suggestion, um, a soft recommendation. The last bullet under core values, support for individuals, families, communities, including the LGBTQ+, because then right. it's in writing, it, it's, it's, it's one of the groups of support. Right. I would also add veterans as a separate, or as a group as well that we will identify. We've got it, but... Yeah, but it, in that same line, I guess. Um, under core values. Under core I think she's saying, instead of just saying, we're going to support she's individuals and families in yeah. yeah. our community, okay, she, she's saying she'd like more definition to what those people and families <coughs> are, including LGBTQ plus and yeah. veterans. And tribal. And, and tribal, yes. <laughs> Specific groups. Yes. yes. I don't know if you, oh. I mean, I feel like there could be any Okay, the, I mean, it makes me think of children, Three. too. You. Oh, okay. No, Michelle. It's just a group that has no rights. Um, um, like, we don't have the same, or like the LGBTQ plus world does not have the same rights as um, uh, just a regular child or uh, their, our schools set it apart, um, they have, um, they address it separately, um, um, look, actually, um, I, I don't know, I'm just going to say it this way. Uh, I think sometimes when we make the statement of special segments within those communities, the assumption would be that everyone in the community recognizes what categories fall under special segments. And I don't believe that that's the case. They're calling out those, those 
those the parts of our diverse population in Curry County, specifically to say tribal, to say LGBTQ plus, tells that group of people in our community we care about you, we are including you in the work that we're doing. And I think that message rings loud and clear, and it needs to be. It, it really does. That's, I, we got it. Yeah. Okay. Could there be a statement? Um, to cover the special segments that you, you, there's, there's can, several very appropriate. encourage the microphone because yeah, it's not going to. I don't know if it works. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there are several different statements that have been used that are um, really appropriate to make sure that we're recognizing all of the special segments because we could be very careful not to forget a very special segment. Um, and a lot of statements are something to the effect of, um, you know, to, to be culturally and linguistically responsible to, so we could find a statement that would cover all of those areas and that any of those individuals who identify in that way would read that statement and say, yes, I'm included, I'm part of that, and I am covered under the core values of, um, and the vision of and the goals of this council without specifically stating each one and running the risk of missing someone or missing a group that would be considered a special segment. I'm just trying to think of a, a way of doing that because I, like you, was thinking of youth. Um, I work with youth um, and it might be, there might be an appearance that they have rights, but they do not in many ways and they are underserved in many ways and um, so they could, we, we could probably go at this all night long and come up with lots of groups that would be considered special segments. So, just a suggestion. Anything, uh, I have, we have that recorded in the minutes. Uh, are there anything else in vision, mission, core values, purpose, role, that uh, you want to add or change or cut out or because this is something that is going to be etched in stone to really bring back when we have a proposal, when we have an idea, ensure that we match this, that what we come up with is, is covered here, that we are in disagreement. Michelle? Um, I have questions on um, the statement to reach out to appropriate resources to provide a health needs assessment to help identify where to um, focus efforts. Would that be separate from the health need assessments that we do do in our county? That is the ones that we're talking about, is getting those, uh, what uh, advanced health and well, they're all under one this year. Right. Uh, but th yeah, those kind of things, getting the assessment that the VA is doing, any assessments we can get that are up-to-date current information, because we don't have a budget to go out there and do a survey, start surveying people, that would be ideal if we could do what the VA is going to do. But if we can get a grant, I'd, I'd love to see that. And I think that may be possible. Yeah. I, I just didn't, I guess I didn't understand. Um, I do now. Do you see a oh. way to write it so it's clear to the, like we were talking about, you know, finding the words Good that, that right. identify if there's something already being used in the culture that uh, might replace I think amongst this group right here, we probably can glean a lot of resources for those types of things. And one example is the United Way is now undergoing a youth listening session in Curry County. We will be talking with our youth about a variety of subjects, and this will be this topic will be included in our guided listening sessions with these students. So that's. I mean, if we just all in our workaday work, what we do, if we are willing to bring back that those results and that information to this larger group, along with the community health assessments and chip plans and all of those other and the veterans assessments, 
if, if we, we bring this information back to the group, we'll have some good, some good responses right at our fingertips that we can rely on some data and, and assessment results. Yep, that's the whole purpose of having the stakeholders, you know, getting that information in that category. I just envision having the elders have, have a little talk session, you know, and give some topics and see what they think about those. Because you got the people there all the time for lunch. But anyway, how, how we can glean more information uh, that is personal on what's going on in Curry County would be ideal. Yes? I would take Mike, one we got to do the mic. I would take it one step further and ask, um, um, ask to um, um, take this data and make sense of it for the public and not just this committee. So. Put that in the notes. That's mm -hmm. what I do. I just, yeah. 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 Well, hopefully one day, every single month, we bring an awareness to this county about something around suicide. The opioid, how many actually are overdosing because it's suicidal. It's a choice. Uh, and getting clearer on that all the way along. Yes? I guess I, I've not seen where we're um, promising that we'll bring that information out. I mean, our purpose... Um, um, Tell me where it ought to go. And well, I think, I think it should be under purpose. I mean, if part of it is to educate the public. Um, it needs to be written in our purpose. Okay. Do you have a recommendation? Or can you give us, uh, at a later date, can you give us a recommendation on how to word that? Sure. Great. Thank you. Can I clarify? You were saying how we would, that part of our purpose should be to to uh, disseminate this information to the public in a way they can understand. Yes. Any other thoughts on any of this mission's purpose? Yes. Go. Um, I was just thinking, um, which I tend to do out loud sometimes, um, when you said that this was going to be etched in stone, um, I personally think that because this is new and we're all learning together that it should be a document that can be changed and updated and um, better as we all learn together. I was meant for Okay, great. <laughs> I got that in a minute, right? <laughs> Get that in a minute. She's way ahead of us all. Yeah, she is. Uh, what I would ask is that between now and our April meeting, that you peruse this very clearly. And so at the April meeting, unless we want to approve it today. At the April meeting, come back with the goal of finalizing this and approving it. Then, we go to the next four pages. And this isn't something that we're going to have time to do today. But we really, each one of the stakeholder groups, uh, I want you to look at this and see how that looks for your stakeholder group. Is it inclusive of everything we're talking, you're talking about, of your, your section needs are talking about? And also I have given you a, a chart that you can fill the information in for other groups. It's, if you've got an idea for you and you say, Oh, this would be perfect in our stakeholder group. Add those in. Because we I've accumulated a lot of stuff here. And I've accumulated a lot of stuff that could be um, low-hanging fruit. 
things that we can imma immediately make an impact on in our community. But we also want to have a longer term goal of things we want to accomplish this year. And then the great goal of in 2021 and beyond, what do we need to do to get to zero attempts? Okay. I just wanted to share, uh, because Mental Health Awareness is right around the corner um, in May, that in Dillard County, um, our mental health uh, department has um, funding um, to educate during the month of May. And what I did with them over the past two years was work on messaging to the community um, to remove the stigma about mental health. But the cool thing that we did was that we did the messages in English, Spanish, and Hmong, um, which was not easy. <laughs> um, but it was, it was really helped to be all inclusive for our community. Um, and so that might be something that you think about moving forward is when you do create your messaging to include other languages to um, help affect all cultures. And now I was just thinking maybe we could get it done in Talawa as well. We have, um, we do a, a book reading for children on the radio. And we have, sometimes the Tala will come in and read, they'll read it in Spanish um, and English, or Talawa in English, and it's really cool. Do we have a resource? Do we have a resource that shows what our cultural population is as far as other languages? <laughs> Here. So I'll speak up. I was in another, I think it was a chip steering meeting. We were having a discussion around limited English population, or proficiency, sorry, LEP, limited English proficiency. And unless your county hits that 1,000 mark for speakers of a language other than English, there is not a, that is, there's no trigger for you to have to provide resource material in other languages. So, of course, in Korea County, we, we don't meet that trigger in any language other than English. And so I've asked Oregon Health Authority in particular to re revisit those triggers and and maybe fashion an, a trigger for rural Oregon communities that that is more in alignment with our total population. So if we have a percentage of our total population to speak another language other than English, that we then are required to produce subject matter material in that language. Because we're missing a lot of folks in our community that are not um, proficient English speakers as a result of that threshold being so high. Um, we do get, like our OHP applications, we get in Spanish. That's the only other language um, that we get those in. And so if we had someone come in to our office, thankfully we do have this laminated, um, colorful document in our, at our reception desk that has every possible language you can think of front and back. And there's an 800 number. Somebody can point to the language that they speak and you can call that 800 number and they can use the translation service. Um, I don't know that everybody in, in you know, every office in the county has that kind of a resource. I'd be willing to share it. But, but because we're, you know, for our, our triggers for those kinds of um, cultural, culturally sensitive um, initiatives are so high because they're set, they're set in Portland and they're set in, Sa in Salem and there's not a lot of consideration for the fact that we just don't, we're not going to ever get those triggers here, which means that we're not going to lean forward necessarily and provide um, alternative languages for our community and we should push for that. Yeah, I understand there, uh, is, the county has an app that translates, uh, I believe. If, if you have a meeting, and, and I, it's one of the things that I looked into what, in what we, ha we have to serve somebody 
we want to serve somebody that needs translation and that kind of thing. And it's part of being open, open meeting law. And so we can do that, and we've got the opportunity with the county to do that. It's never been done before, but at least they've got the, and uh, John was telling me there's an app to do that. Uh, so, but the piece I would take off of this is I think it's a good thing to look at the things that we put together in the community that uh, uh, are dual language, if we can find the person that can do really good translation for donation. Kelly. I was just going to say that sometimes there's opportunities for you to just make the choice to provide it mm -hmm. um, in a different language. And the way that I did it is I brought people in that spoke the language. There are also funds. Sometimes uh, the Talawa Dani Nation has funds to provide that message in their language. Um, and so you might think kind of in that way when you're looking at how do you access some piece of information that you can provide in a different language. Uh, just to add to that, the, the tribal numbers in Curry County is a little bit difficult to get an accurate count on because we have California tribes involved. And so when you're getting Oregon numbers, you're going to get Oregon tribes and you're getting, but in fact we have a lot of California tribal members here, so it's a little bit difficult to get those numbers. But I, I, one thing that i um, trying to implement to help uh, put a better number on that is working with the food bank and um, helping them, suggesting that they ask uh, when people come in uh, for, for services so that we can try to at least track there, how many uh, tribal members might be accessing those services. So it's a small step, but uh, it, it's a difficult, difficult uh, thing to get an accurate number on. Is there a uniform language that we would look at in Curry County? Tribal. So it's uh, Athabascan language is what um, is spoken along the West Coast. Um, there are several variations of that. Tatutni, uh, Tala, um, Chinook, there's several variations along the West Coast here. There's not just one. Um, but for Curry? Uh, it's still <laughs> three? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, my, probably the biggest resource would be the Celeste language. Um, which is part to do. They have probably the biggest demographic here of that particular language. Great. Great idea. And also the biggest tribe in Oregon, and they would definitely have resources to, to meet that. Good idea. Anything else at this point? We'll move to a quick one just on needs assessment, pointing it out. This is something, again, in looking at your goals. Uh, what are the basic needs within your category to uh, put on the sheet? The next category is new business, and is there anything for the good of the order that ought to be addressed? Beth. I've got several folks in the room that I know that can help me um, with identification of the um, unaccompanied youth or opportunity youth age range 16 to 24 for those youth listening sessions. So I'm again I'm asking the group to if you have um, if you work with young people and they are willing to participate in listening sessions in South Central and North Korea, please get in touch with me, um, please send me their contact information so I can start organizing these listening sessions. We really want a diverse group, um, as, as diverse as possible, so I can use some help with that, if you guys can help me out. Thanks. Thank you. Kill it. Kill it. I was just, just going to say that um, if any of your organizations have the need for um, a public service announcement, please send it to me. Um, Connie has uh, been good about sending me information, and Beth is going to send me um, 
a few things about what she's trying to accomplish. But if you have an event or something that uh, meets the criteria of a, prep, of a PSA, then please just email it to me and I can um, try to help with that. Can we do anything with the uh, self-injury? Because the county, the city, and the school district. Uh, is the, the, the yes. The city's already done the proclamation. Yes. Okay. All I need is kind of like the who, what, where, when, and why. You just send that information send to me. To and you, didn't I? Pardon me? I did send it to you, didn't I? A PSA? Yeah. Well, I didn't write the PSA. You asked for the information on self-injury and the uh, proclamation. If not, I'll send you a copy. I thought I sent it to you. Oh, in, in the information you sent us like last week? You, you had asked me for uh, Sorry. the information and what I thought I sent was the, it's in your packet actually. Uh -huh. the, the, I saw the proclamation. The, the proclamation and the story there, both. So okay. That's what I've got and it'd be great to let the, the people know that the city, the county, and the school district has adopted the proclamation. Okay, thank you. Michelle. Um, Beth, what are your dates rolling out on um, the um, identification of the young company? On company. I don't have any dates set right now. There are no dates set. I'm still, I'm, we're just in the beginning of outreach um, in this project, so, but Clearly, we'd like to get it done before the end of the school year, if possible, as a goal, before everybody runs off to go to vacation <laughs> or work or college. Um, yeah. Great. Next item. Does anybody have any criticism or self-criticism of their own actions or that they want to address? Microphone. Down that way. I'll self, I'll self crit for not being fast enough to get in under the new business. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, let everybody know that um, there's some information at the back of the room. Um, I like to share resources. Um, one of the things that uh, we find is there are a lot of resources out there that people don't know about. So when I was holding up the flag today, uh, it's called Pause Assisting Veterans. And uh, there are plenty of these in the back, uh, back I think, uh, for you to pick one up. But if veterans need service dogs, they provide these service dogs for free. So that's a resource. And then um, also, uh, the state of Oregon has a Veterans Emergency Financial Assistance Program. A lot of people don't know about that. Um, there are a number of uh, applications there, but you can go on the ODVA website. So if you hear of a veteran who's having uh, emergency financial issues, this might be a place to go. Now sometimes uh, a veteran will go directly to the County Veteran Service Officer. Our uh, CVSO has been, uh, was out for a period of time, so I printed out a number of these and shared these as the needs came up. But if you have that or access to that and you hear of a veteran with a financial need, you can send them to the ODVA, Oregon Department of Veterans Affairs website, or California will have something also, uh, Kelly, so, uh, but there are applications here if you just want to keep one around and if you hear of a veteran that's in need, then share that information. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just for the, the good of the order, my name's pronounced Kat and I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. That's okay. Um, if it, Kat, if it's easier. Um, but uh, a little self-criticism for myself. I tend to be very, very shy, and it's hard for me to immediately speak up. 
Um, but one thing um, in, in veins of getting PSAs out, not just on the television, but on the radio as well, um, I, like that, um, I like it when there is like a, a unified messaging going out. And um, I just wanted to let everybody know too, um, on, on my end, I volunteer for KCIW, and it is one of the more volunteer-based ones, but if there are any PSAs that you want to distribute to Kelly, you can send them to me as well, and I can make sure they get on the air. So I just want to let people know. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Yeah. Next, 10A. The next meeting is going to be on April 1st. Hi. And, and uh, it might be an opportunity to have a little bit of fun. Uh, we'll just see what happens. Uh, what I ask is there are any particular agenda items besides the goals for the group and the individual goals for the stakeholder group that you think would be important to have on that agenda. Kelly. I was just going to say that I feel like everybody in this room is extremely busy and wearing many hats. And so my, I guess my self-critique now that I'm, I'm talking out loud is that I don't feel like I've taken a lot of time to sit down and really work through my plan here and that maybe we might have 20 or 30 minutes in the next meeting where two or three of us each get together and actually sit down and talk about our stakeholders group and get some like do a little round table discussion to kind of get things moving and going and get other people's input because what I might think of in media might be totally different than how you guys see media being a part of this. Um, and I think that might be helpful for, for me. I don't know about anybody else. Yeah. You, yeah. you see the way that that works? Uh, I mean, which which stakeholders would work best together or just have it open? I think just two or three people. Yeah, just pick a couple people and everybody can sit down and have just a smaller discussion and work through some of the thoughts that everybody's having about their particular stakeholders. Michelle. We can also um, put up a parking lot next to whatever group you know you are. But we can have all our, our groups up on the wall, and if you're not part of assessing that group or you know doing the teamwork on that group, you yeah. can add to, add to mm -hmm. other people's groups. Um, That's a good idea. That way, what you know, can we put on the walls? And, and, uh, We've done giant notepads that like have like you know putting sticky notes on the walls yeah. and things like that. So as long as you don't stick them on paintings, we're happy. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We can bring out a whiteboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and the next meeting will be at the uh, Chetco Library in Brooklyn. So uh, anything else? I think that's. Good. I wouldn't mind also bringing a snack for everybody. I know. I have to leave Crescent City at 4, you know, 4, 4 30 to get here, and then I won't get home until almost 9 o'clock at night. And so, um, yeah, <laughs> um, so maybe, I don't know how everybody else does, but you're running to this meeting and then not eating until 8 or 9 o'clock at night. I wouldn't mind bringing a snack. Do I hear you. any objections? <laughs> any allergies or. With that, I'll adjourn at 7.30.